now that we've defined the system that we want to solve in terms of the, the inputs for COMSOL, we go through this process that is pretty much the same depending on the for every problem that you might want to en encounter and use this program to solve. The first thing is to specify the definitions. Global definitions, these are things that can be used outside of, out of COMSOL. The next thing that we're going to focus on for this problem is developing the geometry. Following the development of the geometry, you specify boundary conditions, just like you would for a, a problem in homework on paper. After you specify the geometry and boundary conditions and the equations that you're going to use to solve the problem, you move on to the solution stages towards the end. There's a process where you go from geometry, setting up the equations and the parameters, and then meshing, and then choosing a solver and solving. And then the rest of it afterwards is post-processing, where you look at the output in different fashions. So first, we're going to solve this in a thin slit. <clears throat> we're going to specify the geometry using these built-in console geometry tools located in this top toolbar. It has a number of built-in shapes that depends on the, the, the um, degree of geometry you're using, 1D, 2D, or 3D. So let's specify first our primary domain. And we'll start it with a corner at zero. We'll just draw some, some, tr some rectangle on here. We don't have to be precise here because we can select it and go back to this and enter in the specific details right here. So I want the width to be one meter, for instance. It's going to be a solid. You can specify boundaries to solve PDEs on boundaries as well. It's a really powerful uh, part of the math mode that is especially uh, good at uh, solving these models on boundaries. And the height will specify as not point, uh, not five meters. Okay. Base corner is at zero, zero. And after you've entered in these numbers, you have to hit build selected and it will build that geometry. Then you have this option that will let you zoom to the extents. So this is the geometry. It's a lot longer than it is wide. Um, let's zoom in here a little bit and specify a circle. The circle is going to be the source for our chemical dye that's going to be injected into this uh, fluid stream. So let's go back to the geometry here. We'll have this option to specify a circle. And again, you don't have to be precise with the snapping of where the circle is going to be drawn, because we can just go in and select it. And we want the circle to have a base point. X not point not two is pretty good, but let's specify the Y center point as being not point not five. Actually, not, not, not point not five, not point not two five, since the, put it right in the middle and we hit build selected. Now we're going to change this radius to make it more of a point source. So instead of being not point not two meters, let's make it 0 0.05 meters. Build selected. And now we have a geometry for a narrow gap between two plates or two planes with a geometry specified here that we can later then use and we're specifying domains and geometries with the with the PDEs. So let's pan this a little bit. Okay, get this centered and then we'll zoom out a little bit because this is where the interesting geometry uh, entries will take place. So now that we've finished that we can move on. We're not going to specify a material for this problem. We're going to enter in the material properties though in the next two sections. The two equation modes we selected earlier on were laminar flow and transport of a diluted species. We're going to first specify the laminar flow portion of this problem. Okay. So we have all domains selected for laminar flow. We're going to deal with an incompressible flu fluid. So now we're taking the density, making it a constant, it changes the equations. All of the equations when you're specifying these parameters are available, clicking on this equation drop-down button. Here you can see we have continuity equation here, conservation of mass, and we have um, essentially a stationary form of a 
momentum balance equation that is not yet Navier-Stokes because it we have not imposed yet that the viscosity is constant. All we've specified so far is that the density is constant. So this is the general equation in the domains it will be this that will be solved. Now we specify the fluid properties. Now here's where if you selected a material you would have that it in, in, entered in here automatically. You don't always have the material that you're studying in this database even though it is quite large but instead it's better to know exactly what you're putting into these these values by specifying them yourself. So I'm just going to specify a density and a viscosity in both of those domains. So we're, we've specified the subdomain, the primary uh, domain parameters for this equation. The next thing that's important to solving, that's needed to solve this fluid problem, are the boundary conditions. The default boundary conditions are continuity through here. So it, it highlights is not applicable for those. The other boundary conditions are pre-specified as no slip, but we're going to have an inlet and an outlet. So to specify additional boundary conditions beyond the default ones that are here, you right click on this little drop down here for laminar flow and it shows you all of these different options for boundary conditions. So we're going to first specify an inlet. The inlet boundary will be right here. So you click on that boundary so it's highlighted red, click on the plus button, and then it's, then it's the boundary that you're working on. Although the inlet condition we're going to have is not a velocity condition, we're going to specify a pressure condition with no viscous stress. Let's just call it not point, not one pascals at the inlet. So we have an inlet condition here of a pressure. We have a no slip condition here. We have continuity equations here on this region. Let's zoom out now and specify the other boundary condition at this end. So we're going to go back over here, right click, add an outlet. The outlet will be on the right side, right there. Add it. To our, as our boundary selection we're interested in. And we're going to have it specified as pressure, no viscous stress. And let's specify the pressure as being equal to zero at that point in space. With this, we have done enough to actually solve for the laminar flow process. So to test our work, we can right click on here on the transport of di dilute species and disable this. We can jump right down here to the solver hit compute and see if it actually computes and produces an output that is consistent with our expectations for this distribution. It's computing it, it's solved it, it's converging rapidly, and it has produced now a velocity distribution. This is the first part, this concludes the first part of setting up our multi-physics problem, establishing the laminar flow pattern for the distribution of velocity between these two slits.